So let's try this again. The story that I'm about to talk about is from truckersnews.com. It's titled, ATA fires back and moves to delay the ELD implementation. Now, the ATA, also known as the American Trucking Association, is a group comprised of approximately 37,000 members, which is smaller than OIDA, even though they've been around longer than OIDA. Now, how does the ATA have this much power, is what you're going to ask yourself. The ATA has this much power because it's 37,000 members. is comprised mainly of leaders or board members of big trucking companies, huge companies, and it's all about the money. Now, the ATA sent a letter to Congress basically stating, uh, in a nutshell, that what's happening by trying to delay ELDs is a last-ditch try by some to evade critically important safety laws. Critically important safety laws imposed on us by who? People that don't drive trucks. Maybe they've been in the industry for a long time, but for crying out loud, what do they know? So, earlier this week, if you guys remember, uh, a bill was introduced in the House that, if signed, would delay the implementation of ELDs by two years. Okay? They're also doing, the Congress is also required that the FMCSA uh, do a study on ELDs to find out the impact on, on small carriers. Okay, now I'm going to read this. Okay, this is from, this is, these are quotes from the letter of Bill Sullivan, the ATA's Executive Vice President of Advo Advocacy. Okay, it says, over the past week, we have heard from our members loudly and clearly that they are vehemently opposed to those attempts to delay this important regulation. The industry stands ready and is prepared to implement ELDs. As our letter explains, it is incumbent on, regulator, on regulators and on, all, on Congress to dismiss this last ditch try by some to evade critically important safety laws. So they're basically begging Congress not to stop this. Now, how do these guys have this much power? Well, it's all about the cash. Because, if you remember, the ATA had two trucks with their logos on it. Sorry about that, but I'm back. So, if you remember, the ATA had two trucks parked in front of the White House. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. This says, okay, uh, the full text of the letter, I'm going to read part of this to you. Uh, it went to the FMCSA's Deputy Administrator, Daphne Jefferson, okay, from that Bill Sullivan guy, the ATA's Executive Vice President. It said, I'm writing you on behalf of the American Trucking Association, the, nation, the nation's largest and most authoritative voice representing the trucking industry, to oppose any effort to delay the December implementation of the fully litigated, widely debated, and congressionally mandated use of Sorry about that again. Uh... Uh, did where I leave off. The December dead with the December deadline approaching. Opponents of electronic logging are making one last attempt to influence policymakers to reconsider the impending implementation deadline. These efforts are misguided, are supported by misinformation, and are simply an attempt to evade compliance with the existing laws and regulations governing duty hours and driver fatigue. Listen, these people are basically saying, the ATA is basically saying that professional drivers like you and me are unsafe and that we need a babysitter. I don't think anyone joined this industry because they needed a babysitter. And then they go through this letter. It's a very long letter. I will, I will post the link after the video post to this story so you guys can go read it because there's a copy of this letter in there, okay? Um, let me go down here a little further. Uh, 
Where did the end of the letter go? Okay, so here's here's the kicker, right? If you guys are all with me, give me a thumbs up. One final note on this rule. Beyond being thoroughly debated and litigated, using an electronic logging device to record hours of service is the right thing to do. It is using more accurate, easier to access, and most importantly, and most importantly, more difficult to falsify. 21st century technology to demonstrate uh, more difficult to falsify. 21st century technology to demonstrate compliance with the hours of service rather than an easy to falsify, error prone, and 18th century technology of paper and pencil. So the ATA uh, is claiming that all of you guys that are on paper are from the 18th century. You're too old school for the ATA. This is ridiculous. It says the ATA strongly supports the FMCSA's electronic logging device mandate and urges Congress not to interfere in the agency's efforts to improve safety by meeting this important regulatory deadline. Do you guys want to see the board members for the ATA? Let me see who they are. Let me show you. Check this out. These are the ATA's board members. The ATA's board members. You've got Kevin Birch, the president of Jet Express. Gary Salisbury, president and CEO of Fikes Truck Line. You got Mike Card, the president of Combined Transport. Randy Clifford, the chairman of Ventura Transfer Company. I mean, you got Dave Brody, senior VP. Uh, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I mean, these guys, okay, you've got Kevin Birch, who's the chairman, Chris Spear, you've got, uh, let me see here, who else we got here? All of these people, they look, they look so much like they've, uh, they've been around. Oh, well, they've been around trucking forever. I wish I could see a list of their members, you know, because it would show you, uh, who are your members? Oh, um, who are your big contributors? Uh, well, you got Warner Transportation, you got Knight Transportation, you got Swift Transportation, you got Schneider. Every major company, that's, that's how the ATA gets its money, to have these lobbyists to make all this shit happen. It says right here on their website that they have 37,000 members. 37,000 members. How many of those... 37,000 members drive trucks. How many of those 37,000 members um, really give a shit about you or me? All this is, all the ELD mandate is, all of this stuff is simply so that the big guys, the big guys, can break down the small companies and get them out of the way. That's all it is. They're trying to do something, anything they can, to increase their profits. One of the easiest ways they obviously know how is to get rid of the competition. Who's the competition? Folks like me. The one truck operations. The 50 or 100 truck operations. The mom and pops. That's who they can hurt. What a lot of people don't understand is the major companies, they don't move the majority of the freight in the country. 
they actually move a very small percentage of it. And think about it. Three and a half million trucks on the road and a company even like the Knight Swift thing, whatever they're swiftly Knight, whatever they're calling themselves, they don't even put a blip on the radar when it comes to the, the amount of freight that's moved in the country. And they're the largest. So take all of the big boys, and maybe they have, let's give them a little bit of credit here, maybe they have a quarter million trucks, all these big companies combined. 250,000. Okay? 250,000 out of three and a half million ain't shit. That's why they're butthurt. They want more. Greed is pushing them. Shareholders are pushing them to do whatever they can to get rid of the little guy. To get rid of the small time driver. Excuse me. It's insane. When you have Daphne Jefferson, let's see if we can find her on the American Trucking Association members uh, or their uh, people here, their board of directors or whatever. Let's see who Daphne is here. Let's see. Uh, where are you at there, Daphne Johnson? Love to see where you're at. I see Daphne on here. Daphne Jefferson. Where are you at here? Let's just see who the uh, ATA president, Chris Spear. Let's see if there's a write-up on here. So here's the ATA's uh, uh, president. All of these people, by the way, are huge corporate folks. Like they're either involved in other big companies or whatever. Chris Spear is the president and CEO of the American Trucking Association. Uh, where does it go? Prior to his time at the ATA, Chris worked in the transportation, energy, labor, and technology sectors in over five different contents. Most recently, Chris worked for Hyundai Motor Company, where he served as vice president of government affairs. In that role... Blah, blah, blah. He was a senior vice president. Blah, blah, blah. For Honeywell. Blah, blah, blah. Nowhere in here does it say he has any knowledge. Of you or me. Doesn't even say, doesn't even have some fake line. Saying that they care about the driver. That he cares about the drivers. Let's go down here. Let's see, let's look at uh, this guy. John Smith. He's the ATA secretary. Oh, John Smith has been chairman of CRST International and National Truckload and Flatbed Carrier, a, a National Truckload Carrier, since 2010. Do you think... That a chairman of CRST gives a flying shit about a driver? No. Hello, Tex Crowley. These guys don't care. This guy, the chairman of CRST, sits on this board. Okay. Let's get a look at here. Barry Pottle. Who is this guy? He's the second vice, second vice chairman. Uh, and the, is the CEO of Pottles Transportation. I mean, yeah, these guys do good stuff, I'm sure. I'm sure they do good stuff in, in their lives, in their communities, or whatever. Here you go. Here's one that might surprise you. Michael Ducker, who's the treasurer. Okay has been with FedEx for more than 40 years. Years.
It's been with FedEx for 40 years. Listen, each and every one of you has a voice, you have a name, you have a heartbeat, you have a soul. And I doubt any of you would trade that just so that you could make some extra cash by making some law imposed on people that is going to hurt millions while only protecting a few. It's ridiculous. All these people have either worked for or ran a major trucking company. Oddly enough, that's who benefits from the ELD stuff. It's who benefits from shitty hours of service. And we're letting it happen. <clears throat> we as drivers are letting it happen to us. Because not enough people are speaking up. Not enough people are standing shoulder to shoulder with each other. It's just ridiculous, guys. It's ridiculous. And we're letting this happen. Look at that. Who do you think's in the politicians' pockets? The fucking ATA. Look. It's two of their trucks in front of the freaking White House, for crying out loud. Ridiculous, guys. So, what can we do? Well, we can start asking tough questions. That's for starters. So at GATS, this year, this year at GATS, we're going to try and get some answers. With the help of a few others, we're going to raise some really important questions on video, and we want you guys to help us, and we want you to be there and have our backs. Myself, Ike Stevens, and a few other folks are going to be reaching out, getting questions from you guys and other places to take directly to the ATA at their booth during the Dallas Truck Show. We're going to put it all on video and put it all online for you to see. We want every driver to have the opportunity to see the faces and hear the response of the people who claim to care about the industry so much that they will do whatever it takes to make us safer. Funny how safer makes them richer. You can also go and join OIDA, the Owner Operators Independent Owner Operator Independent Driver Association. Go join OIDA. I've only been a member of OIDA for a few weeks. But I know the importance of having somebody that's been around for a long time and has knowledge have your back. I've known about OIDA for years. Never joined. My fault. There are many people out there who are lifetime OIDA members who renew their membership every year and they do it for numerous reasons. OIDA has the machine in place to talk directly to members of our government, talk to the FMCSA, but they still need help. Lobbyists cost money. Why do you think the ATA has such easy access to all of them? They've got millions and millions of dollars that are given to them by the major companies in this industry. They want to impose laws and regulations to make us safer. Go join OIDA. 
look up the benefits and stuff that they offer their members. And if you're going to be at the Dallas Truck Show, come to the OIDA booth and ask all the questions. OIDA membership is $45 for an entire year. $45. So you can imagine how many members at $45 a member it's going to take for us to be able to help OIDA get the power and the financial backing that the ATA has when they've got the big guns behind all of them. The big guns think that a barrage of fire flooding the playing field will give them a victory. I see more in us than in them. We're tenacious. We won't give up. And I think one well-aimed shot right through the crosshairs that'll do more than make than, than lobbing grenades any day. OIDA isn't just for owner operators. Okay? Oh, is for drivers. So if you're a driver, whether it's company, lease operator, owner operator, whatever, you and your spouse can join. Go read the story on truckersnews.com. Go check my Facebook page. I shared it. You can find the link there. Come into the These Trucking YouTubers group on Zello. Talk to us about this issue. We want to hear from everybody. Listen, guys. We need to stop supporting those who support themselves and start supporting those who support others. The ATA looks out for themselves and promotes things for the interest of those major companies. Major companies, brokerages, and lumpers will be the ruin of this industry. There's a reason why the government and other people are so against monopolies. They want more money, more power, and more control over you and me. And enough is enough. Each one of you that holds a CDL license, whether you're currently in a truck or not, whether you're retired or still driving or just started or been out here for 5, 10, or 15 years, you have the ability to make a difference. And it's time for you to get the lead out of your ass. Stop saying that I will do something and actually act on it and get her done. So I'm asking each one of you who drives a truck, go to the OIDA website and join. They've got the machine. We need to put the fuel in it. Add your name to the ever-growing list of people that are tired of the bullshit. That are tired of the stupid regulation. The thousands of laws and rules that we have to abide by. More than any other industry... Why us? Maybe because we're too nice. Maybe because years ago they thought they hadn't made. I don't know. But I know right now, enough is enough. I'm putting my eggs in the OIDA basket. Because at least they've proven that they can get shit 
to Congress. They've proven that they can get things to the Supreme Court. But we need to help them. You can't just cross your fingers and hope for the best. So go to oida.com. Join OIDA. $45 for an entire year. It's not going to break the bank. If you used to be a member, and you thought they weren't doing anything for you, now's the time you might want to reconsider. I'll tell you this. The ATA, they're not for the trucking industry. They're not. Come Dallas, we're going to put ATA, the ATA on the spot. And we hope all of you guys will join us. Those of you that can't make it, if you've got a question for them, leave in a comment on one of these videos. Send OIDA a message. Ike, myself, Bill Weaver, Tex Crowley, anybody. Send somebody a message. Get your question answered. You guys are the ones that these ELDs and the hours of service all of these regulations, you guys are the ones that they affect. Why not have your voice heard? Stop taking the punishment. We let the actions of a few idiots out here on the road scare the public and waver the people that make the laws. Hold these assholes accountable by doing what's right and protecting yourself. If you want ELDs, ATA, fine. I think you should give them to the unsafe guys first. I think you should give them to the guys that have a whole bunch of accidents and log violations. You say it's for safety. Why in the hell blanket the industry with this bullshit? Give it to those jackasses. Give it to those screw-ups. I thought the law stated that if a company had too many accidents that the DOT could strip them of their number. Strip a carrier of their DOT number. Well, I don't know how many accidents fucking Swift has had. They still got a DOT number. But I guarantee you that if there was a mom and pop trucking company that had five trucks and one of those drivers was a screw up and had maybe three or four accidents and they started building bad CSA scores or something, that the DOT would probably pull their number. Why is that? Maybe because they're not big contributors to the ATA. There's no reason that anybody should put up with this shit. And I hate to be so frank and upfront and blunt with everybody, but it's our fault. It's your fault and it's my fault that all of this stuff happens. Why? Because we sit idly by on our hands and we do nothing. Listen, you might not be the one that wants to write letters or send emails or make phone calls, but there are people that will do that on your behalf. OIDA is for the driver. For the truck driver, the ATA is for the trucking industry, meaning the big companies. The ones that drive down rates, that make shit worse for us. We can't let it happen anymore. You just can't.
make the decision to do something. Everybody wants to protect their right to freedom of speech and and the right to bear arms and <clears throat> everybody believes that they're constitutional lawyers or or whatever you there's tons of things out there. But with 3.5 million trucks on the road and maybe a quarter million of them belonging to the big companies. You think the other 3.25 million of us could come together and say, "Hey, we're getting screwed." Let's do something. Let's protect our rights as drivers. Go join Elida. Get your heads out of the sands, people. Because it's coming. And you've got a dog in this fight. You've got a horse in this race. And if you want your horse to win, then you better have the right jockey riding it. And I think that's all I do. I'll tell you what. Go to Oida, get joined up, send an email to your congressman, congresswoman, senator, the FMCSA, send a letter to Oida. Go to Oida's Facebook group, comment on there. Do something. I don't want this shit to happen. I don't think I don't think the majority of you do either. There's a glimmer of hope that we can stop this ship from happening. There is an inkling. When we all thought that, hey, it's over, it's coming, this, you know, the Supreme Court said no to OIDA. But somehow... We got lucky. And there's a chance. Small chance. That this shit will be delayed for two more years. And then we can all fight against it. For the next two years. We can rally the troops. Lee, immediately after you join OIDA, you can start using the benefits. I already got life insurance. So. So does my wife. We got life insurance now. I never had life insurance before. But I, well, it wasn't just given to me by the government when I was in the military or whatever. But go check out OIDA, check out the benefits they have, join. It's 45 bucks. And I think if you join between now and midnight, you get a free Bill Weaver CD sent to you. So, there you go. Good job, Josh Peterson. Joined OIDA. Just now, while we were live. You're right, Kevin. Kevin says no one sticks together anymore. They don't. And we need to fix that, Kevin. We gotta fix it. So go check out Ida out Oida. Oh, Join the fight against the ATA. Join the fight against the ATA. Stand shoulder to shoulder with the other drivers. And listen, come that Dallas truck show, we're gonna be heading over to that ATA booth that they're gonna have there. And we're going to ask them the questions. And we're going to get them on video.
guys, get joined up. You don't have to be an owner-operator to join. You can be a company driver and still take advantage of a lot of the benefits that they have. But we are going to flood that booth. We are going to flood that booth. And if you see this video and you're watching on the recorded side, if you joined OIDA during this video, or because of this video, or just after this video, or whatever, and you find this, and you're if you are an OIDA member, comment your name in the description, or in the comments. Comment in the description, or in the comments, that you joined OIDA, or are a member of OIDA. Make sure you put your real name in there. Let's do this. Let's make this crap happen. And uh, I'm pretty sure Ike will go live later today or tomorrow, or something like that. But uh, Ike Stevens Live is the channel he's going to be using. If you guys see him, if you're live in here right now and you see him comment and go click, make sure you're subscribed to that channel and uh, you um, have the alerts on. But I got to get going, guys. I'm going to pick up a load. I was supposed to go to Boston, but we canceled that load and instead we're going to Charlotte. Still cucumbers, though. But we have to make this work. We have to do something. Get the lead out of your ass. Get your head out of the sand. And let's do it. Let's help Oida. Let's help them help us, for crying out loud. All right, guys. You know me. Shiny side up. And, uh, oh, yeah. Travel Loco. Travel Loco. We've been turning critics into co-workers since 2017. OIDA.com. Get your butts over there.